until I was 12, uh, and we weren't really famous yet, um, we, we lived a very alternative lifestyle. Uh, we, we were living in a, in a bus and traveling many years. Also for a few years we lived in a boat in Amsterdam. So, um, and back then we really were very much out of the system. It was more possible. Uh, I, I think for most of the years I didn't have an insurance or anything. You know, we were just outlaws in a way. Um, and I, I think for me it was great as a child. I, I felt very free. I never spent a day in school. Uh, I was taught at home. And uh, for me, I, I really enjoyed it. When we became f successful and famous, um, in the beginning it was very exciting. It was very, wow, you know, finally we made it and everything. Because playing on the streets for many years, we were hoping to make it one day. And, um, but after a few years, the success, the fame, started bringing more negative than positive, I'd say. So it, it turned sour. Uh, it broke us as a family. Um, it divided us, uh, it made us lonely, um, and we lost who we really were. Uh, we lost our roots because we became just, you know, fat. We just became rich and, and uh, we just changed us as people. Um, and it took me, it took everybody many years, but for me it took me a couple of years to, to come back on the ground. Uh, what helped was having less success and also um, having to work. Uh, for me, having to provide for my family brought me on my, on my feet and, um, and just realizing you know, that, that that's not the goal in life, that doesn't make you happy. Um, and so, um, but today, uh, the reason why we live a more alternative life mm -hmm. the last few years is probably also because I, I, I remember that as a child. I think for other people to do that step is, is more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, sometimes they come to me and say, man, you're very courageous and to do that and everything. And I say, thank you, but you know, you have to understand, I, I wasn't trying to do something I've never experienced. I, I grew up like that. Mm -hmm. That was my foundation. And then I became sucked into the system. And I became part of everything how, you know, and even worse, you know, just really like decadent and everything. And uh, to turn your back on what you were, you know, what you were used to of what you, how you grew up, that's, that's not good. And so for me, getting older, I realized, wow, I used to live very different and I chose to not live that way anymore. And I choose every day. So that was what really got to me and I realized, wow, maybe I want to change that. Maybe I want to have a more free life and maybe I want to give that to my kids as well because that would be very selfish to have experienced it myself as a child and not give it to them. Uh, so, yeah, for me, um, I think that's it's all connected. It's always hard when you have children because you're not just choosing for yourself or as a couple, but you're choosing for, for the education and the lifestyle of your child, children. But, um, but on the other hand, I think I really did it, or we really did it because of the children, because we realized they're getting older now and they're getting influenced by this, this world nowadays, the way it is. Uh, whether it's um, you know the schools are not the best or they're not as they used to be anymore, come they become very violent, they become very influential, uh, they become very long. Mm -hmm. Kids they used to go to school a couple hours now, but it's almost a whole day. Um, there's many many factors, you know, and uh, I mean everybody has to know for themselves, and and I'm not saying it's all bad, but uh, we had an opportunity and a chance to do it, so we did it. And I have a craft. I, I can do music on the street, you know. Nowadays, if you if you know how to fix things or make chairs, you don't just go to a door, knock, and say, "Can I help you in your house?" And then maybe get some food for it. People call the police on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the world has changed. It's, it's too bad. But it used to be a time where people would just you know go from place to place, and and and, and they'd be fine. I guess a little bit. I mean, mostly they're singing uh, mm -hmm. now, but uh, but slowly but surely they start playing instruments. And uh, 
I think in the next years, if they want to, they will come more and more. They, they are on stage uh -huh. with me uh, and doing my concert on this tour because they, they sang a few songs on my album and, um, and so we said, okay, let's try it out for the tour and uh, on, on a part of the show they come for, I think it's four or five songs and they sing along and they have their own solo parts and we also do a drum thing together and uh, so far it's been going really well, They're, they enjoy it, They're having fun. Uh, the people are very respectful. They they they, they, they treat it, you know, mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to be, and um, and so it's been nice. It's been really special. I don't know where it's going to lead to. We'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. But if they want to do more, uh, I want to give them the possibility. Well, the fun um, the fun stopped when I got older. I'd say 16, 17. Uh, we had been already famous, very successful for a qu four or five years already, and uh, and it became all so not real, and so uh, every day somewhere else, and, and just I don't know, just it wasn't personal anymore. You know, it was we were in a in a, in a bubble, and um, we all didn't realize it. My brothers, my my, my father, nobody realized it. We were just completely I don't, I don't know lost. You know, and. Uh, so I think that's when it didn't make any fun anymore. But it's very normal. Every band, every uh, every actor or whatever, if you, got, if you become too famous, it's not healthy. I think uh, it's very nice that we, we broke a record here in, in Indiana for the most people coming to a concert. But doing those things every day uh, for a few years, doing crazy things like that, breaking records everywhere, um, is not healthy. It's just not good for a person. So you're better off just uh, being successful, uh, but not too successful. I mean, I'm happy that I play in a theater like this, and uh, mostly it's full, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if 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 I were if I were to get successful in playing in halls, I would have to really ask myself the question: Where do I stop? Mm -hmm. Where do I make the limit? Is it a thousand people? Is it five thousand people? Do I play in front of ten thousand people? It comes a point where too many people in front of the stage, it's just not personal anymore. It's just not, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's healthy, you know. So, so I think I really like it when there's artists who they can play in a hall of ten, fifteen thousand people, but they decide not to. So they play the same city four or five times in a hall for 2,000 or 1,000 people, I think that is great. I think I have a lot of respect for that because they keep it personal, they keep it you know, real, and, um, and they don't really care about you know, big whatever. So after experiencing all, all that, I hope uh, to be wiser in the future. Also, awesome. I think this mixed, I think uh -huh. people, who come for the first time to my show maybe have um, something they want to experience from the past or they kind of project it on but uh, latest when they come to the second time not anymore huh? <laughs> um, you know I think um, I've been on tour for quite a few years now and uh, so I've, I've, I've gained my own public you know and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people from the past who grow with me and decide to, to listen to my music and, and enjoy it but um, but I don't play a show with only hits or anything like that. I, I play my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Like today, I'm playing a lot of the new songs for the new album, and it didn't even come out here. So most of them don't even know it. But but they know that. Mm -hmm. They know that. They read it in the internet, and they're fine with it because because they they're used to me. You know. <laughs> uh, and this is the reason, the main reason why you don't play the all the. I, I, there's, there's no particular reason. I just, uh -huh. I, I, I play an old song if I feel like I want to, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a reason for me to play it. But I don't, I don't like artists who only play their hits. If I want to hear those hits, I put the album on. Mm -hmm. I want to see an artist um, and I want to see him alive in that moment. I want to see him really, uh, you know, in the moment and just giving his heart off. And whether I know the songs or don't know the songs, 
doesn't really matter because a live concert is an experience, you know. And if there's something truly happening on stage, I will I will feed it, you know, and it will, it will just it just it will get me inspired. Um, and I, I've I've seen it too often. I've seen bands or artists who play their hits since 10, 20, 30 years, and it's it's like a jail, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's it's very dangerous. You have to watch out. But I've from the first tour on that I did myself, I've always been uh, very consequent, you know. And uh, people know I don't play all my hits. Sometimes I play one or two because I feel like it. Mm -hmm. But um, you just never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Um, first of all, there are different factors. If you sing one song too often, then you start thinking about other things. You're, you're singing it automatic, but you're thinking, I have to buy this, I have to do this, I have to do that, and that's not good. You never want to do that. Um, you don't want to go on autopilot as an artist. If you're on stage for a reason, you chose to be an artist, you chose to be on stage. You didn't choose to do something else. So be on stage, be in the moment. Um, and if you're singing a hit or a new song, it doesn't matter. You have to be in the song. And sometimes it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have a day where you're in and out, in and out, in and out, you know. But otherwise, you have to be very clear about that. And I, I had a, a time, I had a time with my family where for one year or two years, I, I can't remember one concert of that whole time. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, a switch went on. It was like autopilot, and all those concerts were like. But I, was, I wasn't there. It just became too much, you know. And then I realized it, and I was shocked. I realized I couldn't remember all the concerts we just did in the past year or so. And then I realized that, and I, I, sw I swore to myself. I said I promised myself to never do, to never ever do one concert or one song uh, in that state. Mm -hmm. um, that's very, very important. People go to teachers to learn an instrument and they go, oh, but there's certain things you just don't learn. And one thing is that, if you're gonna be an artist, be an artist in every moment. Mm -hmm. Me playing on the street the last two years, I played four, six, eight hours on the street without microphone, just acoustic. And that is difficult to be in the moment. Four, mm -hmm. five, six hours, eight hours. Uh, but even there, I try to do as much as I can because it's something that I can learn from. It's something I can grow from. And I'm missing a huge opportunity if I, if I just allow myself to just, you know, okay, it doesn't matter, just blah, 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 blah. You turn into that and you have a serious problem. Um, well, there's two things. Um, my wife, Kira, um, we've been friends since I was nine years old, and we've been best friends for many, many years, and then eventually we came together as a couple. And so through all those times before the success and during the success, she was always there for me. Uh, so I think she, she helped me a lot. Um, and, uh, and music. Um, I, I, I really, for many, many years, all I did was practice every day for all the spare time I had, I would practice drums and, and I wanted to become the best drummer of the world and, and all that stuff, you know. And, uh, and that, that really saved me. Uh, I think I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned with, with if the girls out there are loving me or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. I, for me, all that was, I didn't understand it. it did, for me, it was just bizarre. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wish you all the best, but I don't know you, and you don't know me, so it's that real, you know. And um, and so for me, focusing on the music, focusing on the drums, and on producing the albums, songwriting, that was for me. I think uh, helped me a lot. It kept me uh, focused. There was a lot of, but um, I think one was very bizarre. Uh, we, we were on tour and we came back at night time to our houseboat and, um, and we were going into the boat and my sister Maite, she, she, she ran because she had to go to the toilet mm -hmm. and she opened the door of the toilet and, and 
there was, there was a girl, um, she was putting on a pants for my brother, uh, Patty. Uh, it was just, uh, yeah, very bizarre. Poor girl. <laughs> she she knew that I didn't think about it much. Mm -hmm. It didn't uh, concern me much. I didn't I didn't have any relationships before her. And she either we, we were both uh, very young. We got together and and so it wasn't an issue really. I think in the beginning it was difficult for her and for every girlfriend in the family. Um, that she be you know looked at strange or you know, mm -hmm. uh, but after a while that went away too. And uh, when we started having kids, it just became more and more clear. You know, I never hid it either. I always mm -hmm. showed that I had a family, and and that's for me that's the most important. And so I I I, I never built an illusion around me. Um, whether I'm I'm. You could still get me or whatever. I mean, all that is over anyway. Mm -hmm. Look at me; I'm an ugly bastard right now. You know, so it uh, doesn't really matter anymore. And today, I'm very, very happy to to have a crowd mm -hmm. that has their own life. I have my own life, and when we have a concert together, we meet up and we have a great time, and that that is super. You know. uh, have you? Are you in touch with the rest of? I'm in touch with everybody pretty mm -hmm. much, some more, some less, um, but I don't talk to them every day, mm -hmm. you know, it depends. And uh, uh, yeah, so, but I mean, being, uh, you know, traveling a lot, I don't see them that often, um, but um, but when we do, then, then we, we talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Poor wives, they're always like, oh no, two Kellys. Very bad. <laughs> we always say it's like um, like the veterans from from Vietnam. You know, when two meet up, they talk and talk about the good and the bad times. It's the same with us because we went through a just a, just a wild thing, mm -hmm. beautiful, positive and negative, all, all mixed up together. And so every time two of us come together, it's just like therapy. <laughs>